Welcome back to my series of videos on mathematics for economists. In this video I'm going to look at homogeneous systems of linear ordinary differential equations where the coefficient matrices are not diagonalizable. So this uh, considers the, the case of the Jordan decomposition. In another video I have looked at the case of diagonalizable matrices and then looked at distinct and repeated and complex eigenvalues. <clears throat> when um, um, eigenvalue decomposition is available. If the eigenvalue decomposition is not available, but we have a Jordan decomposition, things are a bit different. So uh, let's look at the, the simplest possible case. Our system is given by x dot of t is 0, 0, 1, 0 times xt. Now I'm looking at a at a system of two functions, yeah. So x of t is x1 of t and x2 of t. And then the system is given by x1 dot of t is x2 of t and x2 dot of t is 0. This means that x2 is a constant and which constant this is depends on the initial condition. So let's say that we have the simplest possible constant if we have the initial condition that uh, x2 and 0 be equal to 0. It follows that x2 is constantly equal to 0 everywhere. If x2 is constantly equal to 0 everywhere then it follows that x1 dot, which is x2, now is constantly equal to 0. And this means that x1 also is a constant. And of course, if I set this constant also equal to 0, uh, then I get the trivial solution, the 0 vector, which is always a solution of, the, of a homogeneous equation. So that's not so interesting. So the first interesting case is where uh, x1 is a constant not equal to zero. And so if I, for example, impose the initial condition that x1 and zero be equal to one, I get that x1 is constant equal to one. Yeah, but of course I can take any other value here. <clears throat> but then um, I get a first solution to my system of equations. So let me denote it by phi 1 of t. Uh, this would be a solution to the system. So this would consist of two functions, x1 of t and x2 of t, given by constantly equal to 1 and 0, which is the first standard basis vector. This is the solution. Of course, now I said that um, x of x2 of 0 be equal to 0, I can also consider um, x2 of 0 equal to 1. Then I get something slightly different, of course. I get that x2 is constantly equal to 1, uh, and then I get that x1 dot is given by um, x1 dot is given by x2 is given by 1. And this means that x1 is uh, given by t, the integral over 1, plus an integration constant. And if I if I impose the initial condition that x1 of 0 be 0, I get that the constant is equal to 0, and then x1 of t is simply t. And so, therefore, we have found another solution, phi 2 of t, which is given by t and 1. So I can collect these two solutions that I have found in 
the fundamental matrix. Capital Phi of T, which is the matrix that has Phi 1 and Phi 2 in its columns, which is 1, 0, T, and 1. And we can convince ourselves that phi dot, the derivative with respect to, um, to t, is indeed uh, the respect of a constant is equal to 0. So these are all 0 at the respect. The derivative with uh, respect to t of t is 1. And so this is indeed a times phi. If I want to satisfy any given initial condition, so I'm imposing values for x1 and x2 and 0 as two given numbers. Um, I can just multiply the fundamental matrix by this vector of the given initial values. So if we just pick an example, um, let's say that we want to impose that the solution takes the value 2 and 3 for x1 and x2 respectively, um, then we get that the solution has to be chosen as x1 of t and x2 of t equals to fundamental matrix times x0. And this is 2 plus 3t and 3. And then we see that for t equal to 0, indeed, the value of x1 is 2 and the value of x2 is 3. Yeah, uh, so that's the simplest possible case because what are we looking at here? We're looking at a This is a Jordan block for eigenvalue 0, right? And it's a Jordan block, of course, of size 2 by 2. So let's pick, uh, let's pick one that is a bit more interesting and go through that one. Uh, so we have, we have found the complete solution here, uh, fundamental matrix and uh, so let's have a let's have a look at a different one. So let's say we use x dot is given by two zero one and two times x. So then we have a two by two Jordan block. For eigenvalue two. And of course, you will see that everything we do from now on, we can just do for any eigenvalue lambda that will be standing there. So uh, what's, the, what's the explicit system we're looking at? Uh, x dot 1 is given by, I'm just uh, reading along the line here. Um, x dot 1 is given by 2x1 plus 1 x2 of t. And x dot 2 is given by 2x2 of t. Uh, that's the explicit system. Uh, looks innocuous uh, at first sight, uh, but is actually a non diagonalizable coefficient matrix that gives us a slightly different uh, solution procedure from the case of diagonalizable matrices.
So we start with the simplest solution again for the second equation here, which is constantly equal to zero. Yeah. Um, then x1 dot is, since x2 is equal to 0, is just 2 times x1. Uh, and of course, again, I can choose the, the solution 0 here, which would give me the trivial uh, solution, the 0 vector, which is not interesting. So my first interesting uh, solution here is, um, uh, is the one where uh, I do not have a, a 0 initial condition. So um, I use e to the 2t x1 0 and if I impose that x1 and 0 be equal to 1 I get e to the 2t. So I have found my first solution to be this is x e to the 2t is x1 and x2 is 0. So this is 1, 0 times e to the 2t. So the first standard basis vector times e to the 2t, first solution. The next one, of course, x2 dot equals 2x2. Now, of course, I can also solve this I, as I've done it for, for x1. Uh, so I can also use the solution e to the 2t x2 and 0, or e to the 2t uh, for the initial condition that x2 take the value 1 and 0. Then x1 dot is now given by 2x1 plus e to the 2t. This we recognize as a scalar linear ordinary differential equation with constant uh, homogeneous coefficient, this one here, and time varying inhomogeneous term. So let me write this out. Uh, if you are um, unsure about this, check out my video on variation of constants. So this is the general form for first order linear ordinary differential equations. And this is exactly the form that we have here. And the uh, inhomogeneous coefficient here is constantly equal to 2. And the, we have a, the homogeneous con, uh, coefficient is constantly equal to 2. And the inhomogeneous term is a function of time given by e to the 2t. Yeah. And so I, so I can apply my variation of constants formula. Again, if you're not familiar with this part, uh, check out the corresponding video. It's also in the ODE um, playlist. So I start with the homogeneous equation. Uh, let me denote this by x sub h for, for homogeneous. So that's the part that only satisfies the homogeneous uh, term in the differential equation. And this one, of course, has non-trivial solution xh of t equals to equals e to the 2t xh of 0. And I can just use a neutral initial condition here. Then I go into my uh, variation of constants formula. So I get that uh, now I'm using the, I'm taking the homogeneous, excuse me, the inhomogeneous term along. So I'm taking the um, taking the e to the 2t term along.
So this was x1. I can write this of t to be completely explicit here. This is a constant to be adjusted to initial conditions. e to the 2t, the solution to the homogeneous equation, plus e to the 2t, the solution to the homogeneous equation, integral from 0 to t over e to the minus 2s. This is the reciprocal or inverse of the solution to the homogeneous equation, times e to the 2s. This is now the inhomogeneous term, b of s. It just happens to have the, the same form here, um, because, of course, we uh, have chosen the, the Jordan block, which has a 2 in, in, in both equations. But, um, but these are two different objects here uh, that meet each other and cancel each other out. Um, so I get that uh, this simplifies, of course, to the integral over the number 1. And this, of course, is CE to the 2T plus, um, plus TE to the 2T, because the integral, of course, is just equal to T. And then if I uh, choose the, e the, the simplest possible formulation here, uh, for the solution, I can just write t e to the 2t for x1 and 0 equal to 0. I can adjust to other initial conditions later. Um, so here I'm just going for the simplest functional form of the solution. And so this is my this is my solution for x1 of t, right? So I can check if this one actually uh, satisfies the, the differential equation that it's supposed to satisfy, right? So I take the derivative well, with respect to time, and so and then I get the the product rule and the and the chain rule. Uh, so if I uh, so uh, t I I leave alone, and then I take the derivative um, of e to the two t with respect to t. That is two uh, e to the two t plus. Uh, then the I leave e to the two t alone, and the derivative of t with respect to t is just one. So I get just e to the two t. And I recognize this here is indeed uh, two times my solution. Yeah, this is two times x1 plus this is indeed b. So indeed, I satisfy the differential equation. So we found the second solution, phi2 is t e to the 2t and e to the 2t. So I can collect the two solutions on the fundamental matrix. And I write capital Phi of T. This is the matrix that contains Phi 1 and Phi 2 in the columns. This is e to the 2t and 0, and t e to the 2t and e to the 2t. And that, of course, I can also write if I'm so inclined, as 1, 0, t, 1, e to the 2t. Now, note, phi of t is e to the at for this matrix here, e to the 2, 0, 1, 2, times t, because the Jordan decomposition of this matrix, since it is already a Jordan block, uh, certainly is, um, so if, I'm, if I write this as the, as the Jordan decomposition, uh, this is just given by e to the identity times j times the inverse of the identity is again the identity times t, so this is a bit silly. So this is, of course, just e to the jt, because I have already chosen a Jordan block for my uh, system here. Yeah, um, But by the rules of the matrix exponential series, this is equal to p e to the jt 
P inverse, uh, which here is just e to the jt, and so I can um, uh, I can write e to the e to the jt. So um, yeah, so so I can I can equate these two figures here. That's the same. Okay. Now, to adjust to a given initial condition, mm, let's say uh, x10, x20, I have the system x dot is ax. Uh, now with the matrix exponential series, thus I get that xt is e to the cap at x naught is, as we have seen, um, equal to uh, e to the e to the p j. P inverse times t x naught, which as we have seen is equal to e to the jt here x naught because p is just the identity um, x and zero. And so of course if I now want to uh, impose initial conditions, all I need to do is replace x of zero by my given vector x naught here, which is just a vector in R2. So uh, Let's just grab a, a, a more or less random example. Uh, let's say that x naught be given by the vector four and one. So what do we do? We multiply our fundamental matrix by the vector four and one, which we do directly here uh, in, the ex in the examples in the video on uh, the diagonalizable case, I also have p inverse, but p inverse here is just the identity, so uh, uh, that doesn't do anything. Uh, so I get e to the 2t, because I'm looking at the simplest possible cases here. t e to the 2t, e to the 2t, that's the fundamental matrix, times 4, 1 is equal to 4 e to the 2t plus t e to the 2t, e to the 2t, and I can convince myself that uh, if I choose my uh, my x1 of t and x2 of t such, then in t equal to 0, I'm going to indeed have uh, the values 4 and 1 here. Yeah. So, uh, these were Jordan blocks, where, uh, uh, as now said several times, p and p inverse are just the identity. So let's now, as a third case, consider the matrix in the video uh, on the uh, eigenvalues, the case of the Jordan decomposition. Yeah, and in that case, we had the matrix A given by three, zero, zero, uh, one, five, two. 1, 0, 3. And we found the Jordan decomposition to be 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. That was P. And then J was 3, 0, 0, 1, 3, 0. There sits the, uh, the northwest 2 by 2 Jordan block for eigenvalue 3, and then 0, 0, 5 was an innocuous one. Um, that was j, yeah? it's not diagonal, has a Jordan block. And then we have p inverse, which we found to be 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, and 1, minus 1, 1, and 0. That was p inverse. And now, given what we have just discussed, uh, can write 
e to the jt, the matrix exponential series for this matrix. as e to the 3t, 0, 0, t e to the 3t, e to the 3t, 0, 0, 0, e to the 5t. Yeah. So this part here is precisely as we have just studied it for the simple Jordan block cases. And this one here has nothing new over and above what we've already seen in the diagonalizable case. So we only have um, the slight uh, complication here, here that uh, this term is something new compared to the diagonalizable case. So I can compute the fundamental matrix the fundamental matrix now is not just e to the jt but it is since we have we have eigenvectors here that are actually not just the standard basis vectors. Um, this is p times e to the jt. Yeah. Remember that in the, in the diagonalizable case, the diagonalizable case, phi, the fundamental matrix was given by p times e to the lambda t and e to the lambda t was a um, was a diagonal matrix. So what we collected here, the diagonalizable case, was just uh, first eigenvector e to the first eigenvalue times t uh, and so on. V n e to the lambda n t. Yeah, um, but. Uh, We just collected the eigenvectors times e to the eigenvalue times t. But now in the non-diagonalizable case, because of the presence of this term, um, the, 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 the matrix e to the jt is actually not a diagonal matrix. And this makes this product that gives us the fundamental matrix just a tad more um, involved. But, not terribly so. So let's calculate this thing. Uh, I do this. Uh, I do this now, kind of, very slowly in the pedestrian way. So I use my. I lose, use my little scheme here. So I want to have phi is given by p times e to the j t. So P is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. E to the JT is E to the 3T, 0, 0. T, E to the 3T, E to the 3T, 0, 0, 0, E to the 5T. All right, there we go. E to the 3T, plus 0, plus 0. Uh, 1 times t e to the 3t plus 1 times e to the 3t. Let me write it the other way around. So e to the 3t plus t e to the 3t. And here e to the 5t. Next, 0, 0, e to the 5t. Next, 0, e to the 3t, and e to the 5t. Hmm? 
So this year, this was P, this was e to the jt, but this is P times e to the jt of phi. Right? Okay, then let's have a look at the derivative of the fundamental matrix with respect to time. Well, that would be in the first entry 3e to the 3t. In the next entry I get again 3e to the 3t and now I have to use the uh, product rule so I get 3te to the 3t and then one more time e to the 3t so I actually have 4 uh, e to the 3t. Uh, this guy here gives me 5 e to the 5t um, 0, 0, 5e to the 5t, 0, 3e to the 3t, 5e to the 5t. That is phi dot. Is this equal to a times phi? Is this satisfying the differential equation? Well, let's do it again in longhand. So a, 3, 0, 0, 1, 5, 2, 1, 0, 3, um, and now phi, e to the 3t, 0, 0, e to the 3t, plus t, e to the 3t, 0, e to the 3t, e to the 5t, e to the 5t, e to the 5t. And if we did everything right, what's coming to stand, what's coming to stand here, should be equal to this guy. Well, does it? Three e to the three t. That's for sure. Uh, here we get three e to the three t plus three t e to the 3t plus e to the 3t from the last entry. So 4 e to the 3t, which actually is also what we had right here. And here we get 3 apples plus 1 apple plus another apple of 5 apples. And here we get 0, 0, and 5e to the 5t and 0 no, I don't want the ruler um, 3e to the 3t and 2 apples plus 3 apples 5 apples and indeed this is equal to 5 dots so everything is good uh, we have done our job properly okay so we have the solution yeah um, and now of course we have three linearly independent solutions in our um, in our fundamental matrix here and any linear combination of these three linearly independent solutions is again a solution uh, as we have seen in the video on the diagonalizable case and thus to adjust to a given Initial condition, say, want to have five, one, and three. Um, calculate p inverse x naught. Yeah. So um, this would be. P inverse, P inverse we found was 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, and 1, minus 1, 1, and 0, and now 5, 1, and 3 is required, and so we get 2, 2, and 1. And then we get our solution 
x of t as a fundamental matrix times p inverse x naught, which is which is p e to the j t p inverse x naught, which is e to the p j p inverse t x naught, which is e to the a t x naught, which is e to the a t x and zero, and this is why this is a solution. Yeah. So the we only have to now take care of this part here, which we have done in order to adjust to the given initial condition. And so phi t we have already now uh, discussed at nauseum, standing there again. Um, so I can uh, I can simply um, I can simply copy it here again. Uh, e to the three t zero zero e to the three t plus t e to the three t zero e to the three t e to the five t e to the five t e to the five t times now two to one, which is my my p inverse x naught, and I get two e to the three t plus two e to the three t plus two t e to the three t plus e to the five t e to the five t two e to the three t plus e to the five t, and so my solution that satisfies this configuration of initial conditions is given by I want I can of course just write it in the vector. I could also just write it individually. 4e to the 3t plus 2t e to the 3t plus e to the 5t e to the 5t 2e to the 3t plus e to the 5t. And now in zero, I see I get indeed, um, I get indeed five, because this one goes away for t equal to zero, one, and three. So indeed, this satisfies the differential equation and the initial conditions. So thank you very much for watching.